All right, uh, we're close to the end, and the last session is a panel discussion about the future of university teaching we want to work for. So this is not guesswork, who knows what it is. This conversation is about what we want. So that's kind of uh, the approach we're using today. You know Tina Eriksson already? Why don't you come up, Tina? Uh, Susanna Niinistö Sivuranta is the Director of Development for Teaching and Learning Services, well, my boss's boss. Uh, Auli Tuum, you already know her. Please welcome Auli. And then Onni Nyman is a member of the board of the Student Union of University of Helsinki. Onni, please step up. And Art Maso was just the person uh, you saw talk at this time. So please give a big uh, round of applause to all our panelists. We'll get the mics. Mic number one here. And there's the other one. So I have a prepared list of questions, one for each of the panelists, and then one that we're gonna, I'm going to ask of all of you. And we're going to start with yes. Susanna. Yes. Uh, why did we undertake this future of teaching project we've had during this year? What was the reason, and why was this the time to do it? I think if we heard the last speaker, we know the answer for this. But uh, I think the reason was that, of course, it's always uh, a good time to discuss about developing of teaching and, and how important learning is. But especially after the pandemic, we had this kind of uh, time loop when we were middle of the history and future, kind of didn't know where to go. And we heard a lot of discussions uh, all around in the university about that, that what is happening now? What kind of future do we have? Do we have a future? And we also realized that we had a lot of those kind of emotions uh, that needed to get some words and shared words and understanding of that, that what is actually the future like? Okay, we don't know what is the future like, but with this um, kind of talk around in the university with this scenario work, with this celebration of teaching and learning during this year, also the Teachers Academy 10 years, so all those you know, points, they were kind of there, and then we decided maybe with Auli to saying to Sari that wouldn't it be a good idea to have kind of this big discussion uh, about that, what is the future of teaching and learning. Guy was, of course, on the game right away, and also all the wise deans in the faculties, they, they also agreed that, yes, we have to do kind of this big discussion of that, what is the future of teaching and learning in the university. Mm. So, Aulu, you've been, as Susanna said, one of the key, key, uh, key persons during this Future of Teaching project. Mention a few key issues and themes that have been discussed during this year. And uh, are there any surprises about what was taught? Yes, um, I think that I have two very big things in mind. On the other hand, uh, referring to what Susanna already said, that what this uh, scenario work has meant for all of us, so that we had uh, professionals who are, who, who are really good in guiding us, who were really good in guiding us uh, through the whole process, so that we were able to uh, discuss a lot and uh, think uh, from the different angles and viewpoints and they also brought a lot of input that uh, what are the things were on which we can influence and can decide and what are the factors that we need to take into account uh, but uh, we can't necessarily do anything for us. So as we have experienced the pandemic and the war and the uh, rise of prices and the, uh, the money issues so I think that these were the things that really opened. We all know them, but they really opened our eyes that whatever can happen, but still what are the things that we want to stick on and what we want to guarantee and that happens at the, in teaching and learning at University of Helsinki. I think that that was one new thing that be, became much more crystal clear. And the other one was uh, that uh, uh, continuously uh, we ended up talking about the, uh, the community, a feeling of uh, community, collegiality, uh, interactions, and importance of interactions with students, 
long uh, relationships uh, uh, and support uh, for students learning and how we take care of them not only academically but really that they feel that they are safe and this is a safe place where you can learn and develop so i think that these were at the end uh, the things that we really talked quite a lot and we are, maybe it is also the reason because they were so so much challenged so that uh, we are in a very new situation that and how we should do this in the in the current current university and in the future. Tina, you have been following the future of teaching projects from a perspective of a university teacher, of course the chair of the Teachers Academy, and now also as a vice dean for academic affairs at the Faculty of Arts. Have you had any important aha moments or insights during this year uh, about the future of teaching? Maybe I can summarize it into three C's that have been already mentioned here, I think, many times. But I will start with, first with the uh, uh, word curiosity that actually aren't brought us uh, in a very beautiful slideshow and everything. And I think that I have, I'm a great belie believer that that remains in, in the, among us teachers, that we will still try to seek truth in our research and teach the, uh, the, the students so that that doesn't disappear, whatever plans in the future we do make, so that we don't change that much. And then another C was this community building that is so visible and so important for us uh, at the Teachers Academy, but it's obviously part of uh, our well-being and it's part of our, let's say, teacher's identity, that we need each other and we have to uh, not just to look at the micro microwave machine, but, <laughs> but just to be in a place like we wanted to organize here, this as face-to-face as -face event. And then uh, another is uh, very near to that, that third C is like a cooperation, that we need to cooperate with each other uh, as a teachers, but also with students, because students, like we as a teachers, we have felt a little bit alone during the pandemia. And we should for now not really forget the pandemia, but to remember the good things from that and now look forward. And I think these three C's are the one, one of some keys to that. Mm. Thank you. Onni, you represent the student perspective in this panel. What kind of teaching do the students want to see in the future? Uh, thank you. This is a very good question, and I think there's no simple answer to this. And, uh, of course, during the pandemic and after that, especially uh, these new solutions with teaching like remote uh, uh, solutions and hybrid solutions have been a hot topic. And uh, although there is a lot of discussion, it's very hard to say what would be like a, a conclusive answer. To this, I, I think that uh, these new opportunities are, uh, well, opportunities more than threats, uh, but they have also brought new challenges uh, seen during the pandemic uh, with the community and with building the community and the networks that are a big part of the academic world and its uh, influence on uh, the society in general. So uh, there's a lot to think about, but uh, I, I would say that students mostly at this point are optimistic with uh, uh, the new methods of teaching that have been uh, uh, available now. Hmm. Arndt, what kind of discussion is going on at the University of Oslo about the future of teaching? Of course, you've shared a lot about that already. I'll share, I'll share some, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I, I'll say something I didn't say. Hmm. And uh, uh, one of the differences between the Teachers Academy and, and here uh, and our goals and our kind of internal charter is that we also have a bullet point saying we want to contribute to the political discussion about teaching in Norway. And because Oslo traditionally has perhaps had the role that you have here in Finland, we are also in position to do that. And, and all of us are, uh, are, have been, uh, we have a lot of informal influence at our uh, university. We, you know, we're ghostbusters everywhere and we sit on committees, etc. Et but we also have, because uh, we're basically the only uh, teachers academy that is vocal, perhaps there are some that I don't know of. Uh, so we have also written a couple of, of kind of opinion pieces in, in academic newspapers, signaling what we think, what our answer is. And 
the last thing we wrote this fall was uh, directed at the students. We need to take our responsibility for t uh, learning environment better. And we're all used to kind of teaching in class and learn uh, how you teach in, in the kind of times that we're a lot of that teacher, teachers. But when you talk to everyone here, I'm sure that going back to your time as a student, you will talk about sitting in the canteen or a smoking room as we had there, or just talking about uh, learning, meeting people, partying with people, all that which is an important part of learning environment, but that we have outsourced to the students uh, or individual kind of uh, initiative. Uh, whereas we see now that they don't self-organize. The students don't form colloquial groups, reading groups. They hardly party together. And so we need to t take that, that kind of important part of learning uh, more, um, we have to take a role in that. It doesn't mean that we, I'm going to go with you for a party, uh, but it means that we kind of have to kind of set things in place that they meet each other and process learning. And so that's one part. And the second, which is touched upon, is kind of the mix between physical uh, studies and, and online studies, which I think we, we, don't, we can't go back to the way it was. Uh, we have to learn from what was good and what was bad. And we don't know enough about what, what are the challenges and the good things. You know, some of the teachers I mentioned, they just say, when the pandemic works, so I'm never going to open a computer again. And that's not the right attitude. But there are certain, certainly ways that are terrible with uh, online teaching, like brainstorming, for instance. Brainstorming in a class with 30 people or online, not good, right? Uh, but there are other ways that we could use it. And so we, I, I totally agree with the previous director and, and previous speakers that we need to develop the methods and find ways of working with these new tools. And then the last thing I, I would say is that leadership at the university is as big as ours. They have no problem with having information horizontal. And so they know what's going on. They don't work in silos. They meet other people. Um, and the people in the teachers academy uh, that are currently in Oslo, we also have, we're fortunate we have a lot of contacts, but most teachers don't. They work in silos in small departments, in small groups, they don't know what's going on there or there. So we need to take, and because leaderships, uh, uh, and that's not uh, unique to universities, that happens in all big organizations, sharing and disseminating information and, and kind of having innovation happen because of you know, serendipity is so hard. And it's, it's hard online, but we can, as I show with the Teams uh, room, also use tools to make this happen. So that's the, yeah. Hmm. yeah. <laughs> the, fi the final question for, for all the panelists is, what is the future that you want to see and work for? Only you want to start? Or not? Well, we can go in order also. Okay. But, yeah. Oli, you want to go first? Yeah, of course, uh, in university uh, community and uh, learning and teaching and what kind of learning I, I really want to support is that there is a possibility for students to go on their way so that they can study what they are interested in, what they are curious about, what they are <laughs> having joy uh, with studying. They receive support uh, from researchers who know their field, who also are uh, uh, scholarly in a sense that they know how to teach. They are enthusiastic and committed, and they also take care of, of, of students' learning and, and uh, their colleagues as well. They also take responsibility of, of um, the broader community and uh, put, uh, putting initiatives and innovations forward. Uh, instead of sticking to same old things or doing similar things all the time. And then I would like to see a, a university as a community for learning uh, that is, as I said in my <laughs> earlier, earlier response, so that it is uh, academically and um, like intellectually stimulating 
but also safe uh, for different kinds of uh, humans and uh, individuals. And, and I think that those are the things that I really want to maintain mm -hmm. or even cultivate further. Onni, mm -hmm. you want to go next? <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, well, what I think from a student's perspective is that uh, we are going to a direction where things are uh, all, all the more like individualistic. Uh, and I think this also will reflect on uh, like this uh, phase of life when uh, young adults develop their sense of identity very much. And uh, uh, the way, for example, professional uh, identity has uh, many ways uh, def defined uh, the way people see themselves. And I, I think that's something that's in a bit of a lowering trend at this point. And especially with after the pandemic, like uh, what, what is the community that people define themselves mostly based on is a question that will be a lot, a lot more visible in the future, I think, and uh, a sort, of, sort of an increased individualism, I think, is a is, is a trend. And uh, with this, like the remote, remote. Uh, arrangements with the studies have been something that's uh, that's uh, a lot requested but at the same time it is uh, a bit contradictory with the community perspective and it makes uh, uh, interesting interesting like a narrative for this uh, this development that uh, what are the communities that uh, based on people develop their identities in the future i think mm. if this makes very sense. interesting yeah, yeah. Susan. Thanks. I could say only that I agree with them, but, but I also want to point out that um, I hope that we find kind of a new balance in that, that we are happy here together. Because after the pandemic, we had quite, well, we saw the polarization, we had this exceptional experience, and we all um, kind of realized that those things that we thought that are always there, kind of that you can go to the library, you can meet your friends and your loved ones and be with them uh, face to face, it was suddenly gone. And now uh, we have more words, emotions, experience to discuss about these things together and try to find the balance, not in a romantic or, or idealistic way, but really to have, have this kind of answer that we can understand that, of course, everyone as an individual is a unique one, and we have different kind of ideas of that, what is the best kind of university. But I hope that now we have more understanding to see that my opinion is not the only one. There is no right solutions. There, there is many kind of solutions for, for future university. And I hope that we will find that balance, which is safe for everyone, and we can really feel that we we are taking, we can care each other, and we can be loved in the university as unique individuals. Tina, yes. I want to continue what uh, Susanna said here, and you know, uh, hope to see the university that can continue these values, for example, what we have at the University of, of Helsinki and now at the Teachers Academy, because they are values that not all the universities and not all the countries and nations have. In this uh, world of fake news and all this kind of a disinformation, I think that our position as ed educators and uh, as a students ourselves is more important than ever. So I think that we can continue that sort of a belief that our, uh, our work is very important. And uh, the, finally, I want to say that we are pop. That means that people uh, have uh, power. So we are people of power in that sense. So I, I'm a great believer in that sense that we can, we can make a change and we can educate our students to make the, the change in the future. All right. I, I just want to ask you if you could adopt us. <laughs> uh, we, it's, it's better than just copying you. Uh, if you could just adopt us, that would be good. Uh, I think you're doing a lot right. And now I will, uh, it's very inspiring to hear your thoughts about it. And w w a main takeaway for me is that the university leadership has put enough resources and incentives 
into making a critical mass, making it possible to share. And if we don't have that kind of top-down uh, resources uh, and commitment in, into kind of uh, actually taking the initiative of a teacher's academy and, and building on that in cooperation, I think we're going to struggle. Um, yeah. Please adopt us. <laughs> I think the Finns Anytime. really like to end on a positive note when a foreigner says nice things about us. <laughs> so if there are no more thoughts that you want to... i account number afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't tell Arndt that you're supposed to say that, but I'm really glad you did. Uh, thank you, everyone, for, for the seminar. Thank you, panel. Can you get an applause for the panel? Uh, impromptu, I will say two things. Uh, I've been a coordinator for just a less than a half, or more than a half a year. This is an amazing community. It's just amazing, the energy that, the, the, that, you, that you bring and how you develop the university. So it's been, a, been an honor to be a coordinator so long, and it's been an honor to facilitate this party we have today, and there's another party coming. So with this, thank you, everyone. Thank you. And thanks to everybody on the lines as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anne. Hope to see you here. And happy birthday to your daughter. <laughs>